Member statements. I recognize the member for Mississauga Centre. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Speaker. Today we are celebrating the International Francophonie Day. Today we are celebrating International Francophonie Day. Je considère cela comme un grand honneur. It is a honor for me to recognize all the Francophone students. Pierre Philippe Lamage students are here today. I would like to recognize all of them and all the youth from the CEFSPO who are here today to celebrate the International Francophonie Day. I would also like to recognize Fabien Hébert, the president of the Assembly of the Francophonie in Ontario. As a Francophone myself, I am proud to recognize all the contributions of Francophones in our province when it comes to culture, identity, and devel economic development. We want to strengthen Francophone community and provide a bright future for them. During the last four years, we set strategies to show our commitment for Francophonie. We presented many programs for Francophone. French is the fifth language that is most spoken in the world. Ontario is part of this international Francophone family. To the youth, I want to tell you, you should be proud of, pride, proud of who you are and of your roots. Be proud of our founders. Be proud of our symbols. Intervention, intervention of the president. Merci. Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. I recently met a mum in my riding, Amy. It was very hard to listen to Amy's story because it felt like her life was impossible. She's a working parent, she's a single parent, and she's also a parent of two children with autism. Her oldest is eight and he's very high needs. He cannot be left alone. It was very clear to me, Amy was very clear with me when I talked to her, that what she is desperately needing is stable and regular funding for therapy so that her children can reach their full potential. She needs funding for summer programs for kids with autism, which she has a hard time finding, so that she can keep her job and pay the rent. It is essential, she emphasised this, it is essential for her economic survival that she get help. Without support, Amy describes her life as a living in hell. She has been waiting months for provincial funding she is eligible for, and it has not arrived. And I will make sure to follow up with the minister opposite to inquire about her case, because she is in distress and she is not alone. There are thousands of people like Amy. I recently spoke to Surrey House. Uh, it is a provider of excellent autism programs in my riding of University Road to Stale, and they emphasised to me in that meeting that the need, the need for autism programs is growing, while their ability to provide for, these, for this need is shrinking. The, there's more children waiting for preschool speech and language programs, and that is unacceptable. I want to see something in 2023, but... Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Oakville North, Burlington. Speaker, I rise today to recognize Hellenic Heritage Month in Ontario. Our legislature is the only one in Canada to officially recognize this celebration. As an Ontarian of Hellenic origin, I am proud to see our rich cultural history recognized and celebrated. The Hellenic community has had a long and proud history in Canada, dating back to before Confederation. In Ontario and in my own riding of Oakville North Burlington, our community has contributed to the province's growth and prosperity by establishing schools, churches and businesses. This month provides an opportunity for all Ontarians to celebrate the contributions of Hellenic Canadians to our province and country. The ancient Greeks, whose ideas and innovations in philosophy, science, medicine and the arts laid the foundation for the freedoms and democracy that we enjoy today. On March 25, 1821, the Greek Revolution began, leading to the liberation of Greece from the Ottoman Empire's 400-year occupation. Greek Independence Day celebrates the triumph of this revolution, which restored Greece's sovereignty and allowed its people to regain their freedom after centuries of oppression. In recognition of this, I invite all my colleagues to join me at the annual Greek Independence Day Parade this Sunday on the Danforth in Toronto. Thank you. 
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to speak about two of the incredible local not-for-profit organizations that operate in my riding. This morning, I had the pleasure of join joining John Braithwaite, CEO of the Hope Centre in Welland, and Christine Clark Lafleur, Executive Director at Port Cares in Port Coburn, for the Feed Ontario breakfast here at the Legislature. The Hope Centre was created in 1974 when a group of concerned citizens and groups in Welland saw the need for an organization to assist those falling through the gaps in our community. Today, they support their community through their lunch program, food bank, housing stability, and other programs. Port Cares has been in operation since 1986. They've helped countless folks through their housing and crisis support programs, along with their employment and learning services. In January of last year, over 1,700 people were registered with the food bank, and that number has now skyrocketed to almost 2,700. These incredible organizations continue to work industriously despite a growing surge in demand. Speaker, Niagara continues to be hard hit by the soaring cost of living and rising inflation. People are struggling. We need to support organizations like Port Cares and the Hope Centre by providing them with appropriate, stable, long-term funding and investments in affordable housing initiatives. They deserve nothing less. I want to thank their leadership, staff, board of directors and volunteers for their incredible work. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. Ontario is full of talented and resilient youth who continue to make their teachers, families, and communities proud. My constituency of Brampton East is home to a not-for-profit youth organization known as Brampton Robotics. They promote science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and commonly known as STEM. Through their robotics program, Brampton Robotics works with youth across the region of Peel to engage and develop skills in fields such as computer programming, simple machines, building robotic technology, and using the skills they gain, the group takes part in various competitions ranging from local to, uh, local to international tournaments. On March 4th, Brampton Robotics took place uh, in a province-wide competition where out of 80 teams across Ontario, they qualified for two spots in the World Cup taking place in Dallas, Texas wow. next month. I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the youth members of Brampton Robotics and recognize them for their dedication and hard work for this amazing achievement. I'd like to recognize Prabhbir Garewal, Harsharan Rakra, Manjot Dola, Aryan Sharma, Shivan Jaswal, Minhir Go uh, Grover, Kedar Venikar, and Arulini Mutu. Mr. Speaker, it's vital that we continue to support this province's youth and provide them with quality education so they can go on and compose a skilled workforce that will advance the technological, political, and economic fabric of Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. <laughs> member Statements. The member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. The Ontario Nurses Association submitted the following recommendation for Ontario Budget 2023. They make sense. They will save lives and money. Retain nurses and health care workers by improving their working conditions and show them respect. Drop the costly appeal of Bill 124, the Superior Court decision which, which struck down the wage suppression legislation as unconstitutional. Bargain in good faith. What a concept. Legislate 10 permanent paid sick days for all workers. Create more full-time nursing positions to reach a minimum of 70 per cent full-time. Bolster the health care workforce and plan for the future. Launch a robust recruitment strategy to bridge the RN care gap. Ontario needs at least 24,000 new RNs. Increase the number of RN seats at Ontario universities and colleges' standalone programs by 10 per cent. Invest in nurse practitioner-led primary care. Ensure the safety of the nurses and health care professionals. Address violence in the workplace. Stop the privatization of Ontario's health care system. Cap the percentage usage of agency nurses. And finally, fund public health. Increase the funding to 100 per cent so that every community across this great province has the same services and resilience to outbreaks. Save lives, save money, invest in the people in our public health care system in Budget 2023. Member statements. The member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. March break is an opportunity for children across Oxford to recharge their batteries. They also get to enjoy the last few days of Oxford wintertime activities. 
like playing in the snow, skiing, tobogganing, before the mercury begins to rise. After a three-year break due to COVID, it was great to hold my annual skates across my riding. Constituents of all ages came out to show off their skills, learn to skate, or just take it easy with some casual laps around the rink. It was great to see so many smiling faces. Afterwards, everyone got to warm up with hot chocolate while enjoying a cookie or two. On Monday, I held my Ingersoll family skate, where a constituent told me how she calls the town the heart of southwestern Ontario because it is no more than an hour's drive to London, Stratford, and Lake Erie. Smart lady. My skate on Tuesday morning was hosted in the Colin Campbell Community Arena in Tilsonburg, which was named after the former hockey player and coach who was born there. I was off to Norwich that afternoon, where the turnout was beyond our expectations. We had over 100 people show up. And I want to give a big thanks and a shout out to the volunteers, Beth, Michael, and Jim, for helping me set up and run the events. I also want to thank the community centers and arenas for hosting. I look forward to holding my family skates again next year with even larger attendances. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And today, across Ontario, Muslim families are preparing for the holy month of Ramadan. This Wednesday, Ramadan will commence after sundown. Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam, as well as faith, prayer, alms, and pilgrimage. Ramadan is a time for fasting and sacrifice. It's a time for prayer, reflection, and spiritual growth. And it's also a time to strengthen ties with family and your community. I'm looking forward to the many iftars that we're going to have in Ottawa South. And to our Muslim friends and neighbours, thank you for giving your children the gift of faith. It will sustain them. I wish for all a joyous and meaningful month of Ramadan. And I know it's early, but let me be the first to say Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On February 25th, I hosted a community bowling evening in my riding of Mississauga, Aaron Mills. We hosted the event at the Classic Pool, one of the largest bowling centers in Canada. It was lots of fun and a great success. We were expecting 150 guests at the event, but we had over 860 people ended up attending. Yeah, I would like to thank the community for participating and for their continual support. On that note, Mr. Speaker, I am proud of what we were able to accomplish this past month at the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport, where I served as a parliamentary assistant for the past four years. It's one of the province's richest ministries, fostering strong interconnected communities and aligning closely with my own goals of multicultural outreach. My deepest gratitude goes to the Minister for his leadership on the portfolio and for giving me the opportunity to work closely with him. Last week, I was honoured to be appointed as a parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Public and Business Service Delivery. I would like to thank the Honourable Premier and the Minister for putting their trust in me. In my new role, my goal shall remain, as it was always been, to make life easier for all Ontarians. I am honoured to be entrusted with this responsibility, so help me God. All right. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Chatham, Kent, Leeming. Thank you, Speaker. I have the honour to spend St. Patty's Day morning with my friends at Community Living Chatham, Kent, to learn more about the Outward Bound program and to see firsthand their investments in technology made possible by a successful Ontario Trillium Fund grant. This organization supports more than 550 people and their families across our municipality. Under the leadership of Executive Director Ron Korstein, this amazing team works to enrich the lives of people with diverse abilities by providing quality services and meaningful, inclusive opportunities. Guided by principles to provide services that are fiscally responsible, person-centered, and based on informed choice and positive outcomes, Community Living CK promotes physical and emotional well-being flexibility, and a deep respect for cultural differences to ensure everyone has the opportunity to thrive, be active, 
and contribute to our community. Early in the pandemic, community living was quick to adopt technology to ensure these strong relationships between staff, clients, and families remained intact. Thank you, Community Living, Chatham Can, for all the important work you do every day in our communities, and congratulations on your successful grant application. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements for this morning. I beg to inform the House that the following document was tabled. An interim report concerning the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, from the Office of the Integrity Commissioner of Ontario.